embark with me in this video where we dive into the intricate details of this steel hold arm trawler Delfino 65, a liveaboard explorer yacht designed for long range travel. Renowned for its seaworthiness and comfort, this vessel is currently on the market. Stay tuned until the end for more on how you can make this remarkable feat of maritime engineering your very own. Before we start, please remember to give the video a like and help me get to the 50k subscriber milestone by hitting that subscribe button. Today you join me in beautiful Croatia. If you are going to be motoring around the eastern Mediterranean anytime soon, then I would highly recommend that you add this stunning Adriatic coastline to your itinerary. As the boat is moored stern two, we'll board her via the hydraulically operated gangway that is located on the starboard side. Great placement of the vessel's capstans and bollards here. The overhang from the vessel's boat deck provides a very nice shaded area in the cockpit with some removable awning to keep the area even more protected from the sun. Access to the sizeable swim platform, which also leads to the lazarette where the dive compressor is stowed is via a port or starboard staircase. Let's take a moment to appreciate the spacious cockpit seating area, an ideal spot for both relaxation and entertainment. With comfortable seating finished in high quality materials, this is the perfect place to unwind. Stepping into the saloon through the elegant sliding doors, you'll find a convenient staircase to starboard, leading down to the roomy guest quarters situated aft. Directly opposite the sophisticated dining area is an exquisite piece of cabinetry cleverly designed to incorporate a 50 inch retractable TV that is fed by two TrackVision TV6 antennas. A wine cooler and fridge are located in the port aft section of the saloon. The open galley is located forward on the port side and we'll check that out in more detail in a minute. Each of the large windows in the saloon has a pull down blind, ensuring privacy when you are tied up alongside overnight. There is also an additional seating area here opposite the galley. This is the staircase that leads down to the midship's full beam master cabin and we'll be taking a look down there later on in the video. Before we venture into the galley, let's take a moment to appreciate the saloon's sheer volume and generous headroom. Note also the overhead grab rails for when you are powering through the big seas. The expansive windows do more than just offer an exceptional panoramic view, they flood the space with natural light, creating an inviting and bright area. The galley merges practicality with luxury. The countertops, carved from resilient Korean, ensure durability while adding a touch of sophistication. There's an array of top-notch melee appliances from an induction cooktop to a sleek oven and extractor. The stainless steel sink and melee dishwasher streamline the cleanup process, making it as effortless as possible. An additional amenity is the melee refrigerator and freezer, ensuring you can store enough supplies for those long voyages. Let's elevate our tour now as we ascend to the nerve center of the vessel, the pilot's house. Brace yourselves for a breathtaking fusion of modern technology and classic nautical design. The midship position of the helm offers a great vantage point around the vessel. There's a chart table over to port and a large traditional destroyer style ship's wheel. The crew accommodation can be accessed via a staircase located to starboard. Again, we'll look down there later on in the video. Behind the helm station is a raised L-shaped seating area with a table, the perfect spot to get a captain's eye view of what is happening. On the starboard side of the pilot house is a staircase that leads up to the flybridge and boat deck, but we'll check that out during the tour of the upper deck. Here's a digital control panel for the climate control. The boat was launched in 2015, yet thanks to her meticulous maintenance and attention to detail, she resonates an aura of freshness that deceives her age, presenting herself as a much more recent creation. On the helm console to starboard, we have the throttle control levers for the twin Perkins engines. Amidships is the digital display for the autopilot, with some additional switches on the port side. Moving up, we have the Raymarine displays for both the charts and navigation data. 
Her radar comprises a Raymarine Open Scanner 4KW. On the overhead part of the helm position, we have a wind direction indicator as well as a rudder angle indicator. What do you think of this setup in this pilot's house? Let me know in the comments below. It's always good to have some traditional charts on board and if you need some, check out my Amazon stores. You'll find links in the video description. The reverse raked windows in this pilot's house remind me of the type of sturdy and solid windows you find on lifeboats. Their design and build quality mean that this pilot's house can withstand the savage beatings often unleashed at sea by mother nature. The pilot's house is fitted with Raymarine's complete suite, including an electric compass, autopilot, depth sounder and log, as well as the two Raymarine E125 displays inside. There's an additional one on the flybridge. Before we check out the engine room and accommodation areas, let's head out onto the upper deck and have a tour around that as well as the flybridge. The wide teak side decks flanked on one side by the steel superstructure and on the other by solid gunnels and a handrail make you feel very secure as you walk around the upper deck. The boat is actually a CE category A rated vessel. This rating means that the boat is designed for extended voyages in rough seas. It is capable of withstanding winds of up to Belfort 9, which is 41 to 47 knots, and significant wave heights of up to 23 feet, which is 7 meters. Continuing towards the bow, we reach the Portuguese bridge with an access door to the foredeck located amidships. I like the setup on the foredeck of this boat. The exposed steel work on the inboard side of the flared bow helps to maintain the boat's trawler styling. The anchor gear is raised from the deck, making it even easier to operate the two Danforth stainless steel anchors and the two sets of 80 meter 13 mm DIN 766 anchor chain. Just a quick note on how sturdy this boat feels. She felt incredibly stable and solid during my sea trial aboard the boat. Even though it was very windy, the waves did not have any height due to the topography surrounding the marina. But nonetheless, the wind was gusting to 35 knots and the boat was hardly affected by the wind, especially as we came back alongside. This is without a doubt an extremely capable and very solid boat. As we head aft along the port side deck, we pass the port entrance to the pilot's house. Thanks to the remote control on board this boat, the captain can operate the vessel from the upper deck when navigating through tight spaces or coming back alongside. In fact, this is exactly how the captain maneuvered the vessel after our mini sea trial in what were windy conditions as we went back into this tight space. Now let's head up onto the flybridge via the staircase located on the starboard side of the cockpit. I like the fact that these stairs are enclosed into the superstructure on this boat. It means that when it's windy, ascending up to the flybridge isn't a problem. As you'd expect, there's lots of sea survival and safety gear up here, including a life buoy and a life raft. The aft section of the flybridge is used as a boat deck and houses the electric 400 kilogram Brenzoni crane. When stowed away and not in use, both the crane and the boat's tender is kept safe from the elements thanks to these covers. From this vantage point, you get a really good sense of just how much space there is up here for entertaining guests and enjoying our fresco dining. It's good to know as well that this area can be protected from the sun thanks to these several sun covers up here which can easily be put down or put up, even in windy conditions, by one person. The flybridge has a fully functioning helm station with all of the essential nav gear, engine monitoring equipment and throttle control levers that you find in the pilot's house down below. I also really like the design and layout of the radar mast. Here you get a good view of the Raymarine radar and the track vision sat domes. Also notice the huge searchlight atop the radar mast. Obviously, this flybridge is all about entertaining guests. So over on the starboard side, we have a wet bar complete with a grill. Let's head back to the aft section of the flybridge so I can come over to the starboard side and show you the grill and wet bar area. Note the different material in use on the deck by the grill area. 
so any spillages can easily be mopped up without ruining the teak decks. In front of us is the enclosed staircase that leads down into the pilot house. What do you think of the layout and setup on this flybridge? Let me know in the comments below. And remember any comments which are left with a super thanks, always guaranteed a response. It's a great way to support the channel. Now we've finished having a look around the upper deck, let's check out the accommodation areas before heading into the engine room. The two guest cabins in the aft accommodation area are accessed via this staircase in the starboard aft section of the saloon. In total, this boat has eight berths in four cabins, including a crew cabin that has two berths. These handmade models were crafted by the boat's current owner, and I think they are really impressive. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, let's carry on with our tour of the aft accommodation areas. As we head down, you'll notice on the forward bulkhead is the entrance into the engine room. We'll come back and check that out later on in the video. We will start in the port double cabin that has an ensuite. All of the accommodation areas benefit from a central heating system, which is a Cabola Combi 50 kilowatt setup. The three decent sized portholes allow plenty of natural light into the area. And here's a glimpse of the view you get from the portholes whilst the vessel is underway. The thickest section of the steel hull is actually 8 millimeters thick. As you would expect on a long distance liverboard explorer yacht, there is plenty of storage space available. Also, as well as a central heating system, the accommodation areas are kept cool in the warmer climates thanks to a single cycle Waco air conditioning system. Let's take a look in the ensuite. This boat has a capacity for 3,400 litres of fresh water and 1,000 litres of black water. The digital level indicators ensure that the vessel's operator has plenty of warning when the tanks either get too empty or too full. She's also fitted with a Schenker Modular 60 water maker. The hot water is provided by a Cabola 70 litre electric boiler and the water pressure is provided by two electrical pumps. Let's head over to the starboard cabin, which is a twin single. If you are like me, married with two kids, then this accommodation arrangement would be perfect. The owner can enjoy the peace and quiet that comes with having a dedicated owner suite in the midship section of the boat, whilst guests can enjoy their own privacy in the aft section of the vessel. If your children like to shout a lot like mine do, then you don't have to worry about disturbing the owner or the crew as they won't be able to hear a thing. If your children are a bit older or if you've got older guests on board, then this cabin also benefits from a dedicated vanity area. You could also use this desk as a mini workstation or turn the cabin into a mini office if you needed to. As with the double cabin on the port side, this cabin also benefits from its own large ensuite. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, this vessel has been really well looked after by the owner and the crew. And you can tell this throughout the accommodation areas. Everything is clean and everything is tidy. Something that is very important when you're going to be spending a long time on a boat exploring the world. In this lobby area, you'll find the melee washer and dryer. Let's have a look at the owner's accommodation. We'll come back to the engine room in a minute. The owner's full beam master suite can be accessed via this staircase from the saloon. As we head down this staircase on the starboard side is a door that leads into a day head. At the time of filming this video, the owner is actually staying on board. So I never really feel too comfortable poking around where they live, but I'll show you around quickly so you can get a good idea of the setup down here. Her first owner is selling this boat and as you would expect all of the maintenance has been well documented. At the end of the video I will give some more details regarding what you should do if you are thinking about purchasing this boat. She is in turnkey condition and is ready to take you, your family and your friends on trips of a lifetime. If this was your boat where would you go to and why? Where would your next port of call be after leaving Croatia? Let me know in the comments below. As we head out of the owner's cabin and turn what is to port, we find this area. 
As you can see, there is plenty of space here to keep all of your clothes. If your wife is anything like mine, then I'd probably get just one of these cupboards. Time to check out the crew's cabin. Access to the crew accommodation area is via a staircase found on the starboard side of the pilot's house. I like the fact that the builders of this trawler style boat have incorporated a design on this vessel that means the owners, guests and crew accommodation is all separated off from each other, which on a boat of this size I think is really impressive. Down here you'll find twin single berths located on the starboard side with again plenty of storage space. As with the owner's cabin and the guest accommodation, this area is fully heated as well as benefiting from air conditioning. I also like the fact there's an escape hatch down here. There's also a really decent sized ensuite. The current owner has one member of crew, which is the captain. But if you wanted to, you could take on another crew member and they would benefit from a comfortable living arrangement. Personally, I have been on larger boats which have less space for the crew. But as we all know, a happy crew means a happy boat. And it is vital that a crew be given decent sized accommodation. That completes our tour of the accommodation areas. And now it's time to head into the beating heart of this vessel the engine room and find out more about her technical specifications. If you haven't already, please don't forget to give the video a like, especially at this stage because it will really help with its reach on YouTube. This 80 ton displacement boat is powered by twin M300 diesel Perkins engines. They can push the multi hard chine hull through the water at, depending on conditions, a maximum speed of 11.5 knots and she has a cruising speed of 8 knots, burning 40 litres of fuel per hour. The engines have 1670 hours on them and have been kept in excellent condition. They are cooled via a fresh water heat exchanger. She also has a hydraulic bow and stern thruster and a water cooled exhaust system. The boat is also fitted with two 16kW whisper generators and she has three solar panels. When it comes to her stabilisation, she has hydraulic fin stabilisers. At its thickest, the steel hull is 8mm thick, reducing to 6mm above the waterline. In terms of fuel capacity, there are two 4,500 litre steel tanks, with an additional tank that can hold 2,000 litres. The owner was telling me whilst I was on board that when motoring at a cruising speed, the boat has a range of around 3,000 nautical miles. The twin four-bladed propellers are fixed to stainless steel shafts which are water lubricated. When I was chatting to the owner about some of the sea states he has experienced aboard the boat, he told me that they had encountered 3.5 metre waves during their voyages and that the boat handled extremely well. Even though there was no sea state to speak of during our mini sea trial, the boat felt extremely solid and very stable. What do you think of this immaculate and well presented engine room? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now we've finished having a look around the engine room, let's head up to the cockpit and down onto the swim platform so we can check out the lazarette. The lazarette on this boat runs the vessel's full beam and houses a dive compressor. There is also a workbench down here with easy access to the rudder stock, helping to ensure essential maintenance can be carried out on this vital part of the vessel's steering system. So what about the price of this stunning boat? At the time of making this video, she is listed for sale with Dvork Yacht Brokers for 1.75 million euros, which is around 1.5 million pounds sterling or around 1.9 million US dollars at today's exchange rate. If you're interested in finding out more, then you'll find the broker's details at the bottom of the video description. If you subscribe to my second channel, Boat Boy, then I'll be uploading a video there talking about some of my favorite features on this boat. You'll find a link for that YouTube channel in the video description. So what better place to finish the video than my favourite position 
on the helm. I'd like to say a big thank you to the owner of this boat for allowing me onto this stunning vessel and also a big thanks to Devolk Yacht Brokers for inviting me onto the boat. If you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel then you can get in contact with me. I'll leave my contact details in the video description. Finally, please don't forget to give the video a like because it means that more people on YouTube will get to see it. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you on the next one. As always, I'd like to say a massive thank you to my channel members for supporting my YouTube channel. If you'd like to join them by becoming a member, then click on the link pinned in the comments below. As mentioned during my video, don't forget to check out my second channel, Boat Boy, where I basically take you around the boats that I feature, pointing out some of my favorite features on board the boats. You can find the link to that channel in front of you now. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.